we're on section one three and we're going to talk about reflections and after this i'm going to kind of look at your quizzes from the first two days not the one yesterday that's online so i do want you to stay on these notes are not very long uh, i do want you to stay on so we can look at those those quizzes okay um the first thing that we want to do it says graph the following equations i am going to graph them but um I'm not gonna do it the whole time. So I'm gonna do a couple just to show you what it looks like. And then we're gonna move on from there. So the first one is three X plus one minus two. Guys, please make sure you're on time or a little bit early. We're going to make this a regular. This is linear because it's just a singular X and also because it says linear at the top. But we're just going to make it in the form of Y equals an X plus B. So we're going to distribute our three. And then clean it up. Three minus two is one. <clears throat> so the, the way that we graph this, remember, is that we start at one. And we do our slope rise three run one. So it's gonna, sorry, I got off a little bit. It's gonna look like this. Guys, again, I need you to be on time. It says just, oh my gosh. Says, describe the translation of the original function of the oh my goodness guys you have got to be on time i can't keep stopping to take attendance every five seconds please be on time describe the translation of the original function from the parent graph so all it's asking you to do is tell how it moved so on our i can kind of go over what you missed on your quiz with this even though um, your linears and your exponentials don't really have a vertex, like that point, the max or the min. They still have a translation point or a vertex point. That point comes from these two numbers just like it does any other time. So remember, we change x, we change x, so it'd be a negative one, and we keep that y or we keep the last number, which would be negative two. What does that tell you it did? It went left one and down two. Guys, we need to be on time. That's the third time I've said it. You have got to be early so that I can start at 840 and not get interrupted every time somebody logs in, please. Then it says describe the reflection and then we want to look at what the reflection is after we do this certain reflection. So if we look at this, our reflection, part C, this is part C right here. It says F of negative X. So the first part was just a review graphing and telling the translation C is what we're actually doing today. Sorry, I feel like this example has been a little bit choppy, but every time I have to stop, I lose my train of thought. So I apologize to you guys that have been here the whole time. We will get through this. So one more time, let's go over it. All I did up here was tell the translation up, down, left, right. The way we do that is we pull out that vertex point, we change the X and we keep the Y. This means that we went left because remember your X coordinate goes left to right. And since it's negative, it's a left movement one. Negative two is on the Y, so it's either up or down. And since it's negative two, it's gonna be down two. What we're doing new today is the reflection and it tells you what reflection, if you look all the way across, it tells you what reflection to do. So that's what I'm showing you now. So all this says, instead of F of X, we're gonna take our X in our equation and replace it with negative X, okay? We're just replacing it with negative X. So we're gonna do three, 
times negative x plus 1, that's our original function, minus 2. We're going to simplify it out. We get negative 3x plus 3 minus 2 and negative 3x plus 1. I'll show you what this is going to look like. We start at 1, which is exactly where we're starting on the other one, but this time we go down 3 and over 1. Which axis is your axis of symmetry, your x or your y? Which one? Y. Okay. So forget this B and C down here. It doesn't matter because I've done it all up here. So if we change X it reflects Y. Change X reflects Y. So that's why I'm trying to show you the graph for the first couple. I'm going to go to linear absolute value or just absolute value. Some of you on your quiz, when you saw this equation, how do we know that this is an absolute value equation? It sounds like a dumb question, but it's a for real question. How do we know that it's an absolute value equation? Zoomers, you can answer too. Please be part of this class. It's not a trick question. How is this an absolute value equation? What does it have? Yeah, it's got the absolute value bars, right? So anytime you see the absolute value bars, it's automatically an absolute value equation. Some of you missed that on your quiz and put linear. I hope that you put linear because you thought it was linear absolute value, but you need to make sure that you put absolute value. And I even put that in parentheses as one of the choices that you can pick, okay? So make sure that you do that. All right, so we're going to go here. It says we're going to graph this. I'm going to pull out the transformation so I can graph it. So what is our vertex on this equation right here? What is our vertex? Remember, we change what's with x, and then we keep the end number. But what this one doesn't have an end number, so what do we put on the end? Zero. Yep. So I'm going to rewrite that so you guys can see it. So again, to pull out our transformation, we're going to pull out our vertex. We change the X, so it goes to a positive four, and we leave the end number for the Y. Remember, X deals with left or right. Since it's positive, it's going to be right four. And then the Y did absolutely nothing, so the only transformation is right four. Okay, I'm going to show you in the graph. When we graph this, we have our vertex point, four, zero. I did that wrong. Don't, don't graph that point. And then we have up to and over three as our slope. Up to, over three, up to, over three. So this is our absolute value. And then part C says to do H of negative X. That just means take this original function and put in negative X instead of positive X. So two thirds, negative X minus four. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the plus zero on there. All right, I'm gonna do something really quick. I'm gonna stop share for a second. I'm going to share my screen instead of that one. And I'm going to show you this. So on Desmos, again, I want it by hand if I ask you to graph for this unit only. This unit only, I want everything graphed by hand. But I want to show you this on Desmos before I graph so that you know where my, my stuff is coming from, okay? So the first one that we had was... What is going on? Two thirds, ignore the three, I'll get it rid of it in a minute. Absolute value 
x minus four. So this is the one that I just graphed. I'll move us down here out of the way. Okay, so it looks like what I have. The other one, we just did negative x minus four. What happened? What happened? What did we say the last one did when we changed it? It reflected across y, it reflected across y. So how do we do this? How do we graph this? You can just plug in coordinates, it doesn't matter, or you can realize that it's actually a reflect y and you just change the coordinates. So this one was four from here. So the new one's gonna be four from there on the other side. Let me go back to my other screen, sorry. Get us out of the way. right here. So we had four from the origin here. So we're gonna do four from here. We have one from the y-axis, so one from the y-axis. And then we can keep going up to over three, up to over three, and it looks like this. So the same thing that we had in Desmos. You do not have to graph these anymore. Okay, so I'm just going to show you and I'm going to show you on Desmos what they look like instead of you having to graph them. Okay, and that's perfectly fine. But in your homework, if I ask you to graph it, I want you to graph it by hand. Okay, I want you to graph it by hand. All right, look at your quadratic. How do you know that this function is quadratic? Yeah, it's just got the square. Okay, so on your test, your first test, you're going to have to identify functions by their graph shape and by their actual function, okay? So I'm gonna give you graphs and say, what kind of graph is this? You had that yesterday and you had it the day before. I'm also gonna give you equations and I'm gonna say, what type of function is this? And you're gonna have to tell me. And again, that happened the day before yesterday, okay? So you guys are gonna see that on your test. That's why I'm pretty adamant about this. So let's go over it one more time. Linear is a single X. There's nothing crazy happening in it at all. It's just a single X. Quadratic has a square, okay? So linear is just X. Quadratic has X squared. We said that absolute value was because we had absolute value bars, okay? It's real quick, real easy. If it's a graph, linear is a line. What does quadratic look like? A U or an N? Thank you for answering today, I appreciate it. More than you know, I appreciate it. And then we said absolute value looks like a what? A V shape. You're gonna have to be able to identify them. We get to get exponential in just a minute. All right, so our quadratic, if we graph it, I told you I'm just gonna do it on my Screen now. We have negative 2 x to the second, get out of that, plus 3. So this is what it looks like. What, what happened to this one from like yesterday, day before? What's different from the parent graph? You guys remember what the parent graph was? It was a U shape at zero, zero. Uh -huh. The two flipped it over, right? Okay, so we're gonna talk about that in just a second. That's exactly what we're looking at. Okay, so you already know this rule. The other one was probably a little bit different. Okay, so you already know this rule. So what's our vertex point? So if we're trying to find our translation, what's our vertex point? Remember, we can make it look like this to help us out. I'm sorry, I'll get back to your screen. I apologize, y'all. We'll get back to this form that I was writing yesterday. So then you can see your vertex point. We change what's with X and we keep Y. That's our vertex. And if I go back to Desmos, you'll see that that's your vertex. And what does this tell you? It didn't do anything left or right but it did what? No. Up three. 
you will have a section on your test where you have to identify translations and all of them up, down, left, right, reflect X or reflect Y. Okay, so you will have to know exactly what the function does. All right, so then it says put a negative on G of X. What does that mean? Put a negative on the front of that function. You can distribute that in and that will be fine, which will give you a positive 2x squared minus 3. Or in Desmos, and I'll come back to this. You can do just like I did. And type it in just like that. And you guys will see, what did it do? Which axis did it reflect over? The x. So our rule for this one Our rule for this one is if we change Y, and I'll explain why it's Y in just a second, it reflects X. Sorry, that should go over here. I'm a little bit off today. I apologize, y'all. It doesn't matter where it's written, just as long as you have the rule written down, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go down to the bottom for just a minute and I'll explain this. So we've had H of X, we've had F of X, and we've had G of X. Everybody good? The only reason they label on H, F, and G is to let you know that they are different functions, but all of these things are essentially Y equals, okay? So if I do negative H of X, or negative f of x, or negative g of x, that essentially means negative y equals. So that's changing y. Does everybody see that? So one more time with the other one. When we have this, sorry, g of negative x, h of negative x, we're changing x. So this one changes Y, this one changes X, okay? So when we look at functions, if the negative is in the very front, that's changing Y, okay? If the negative is with X, that's changing X. And we'll see a few of those and I'll explain it even more, okay? All right, look at exponential. How do we know that it's exponential? You have a number to the x power. It does not matter what that number is. It could be four to the x, two to the x, it could be a hundred to the x. It doesn't matter, it's just gonna be the x power. Remember that this one is shaped, a positive one, is shaped kind of like a Nike check. Sometimes it goes really fast. It doesn't matter, but it looks like this. Your exponentials always have a horizontal asymptote. That horizontal asymptote is shown in the domain I mean, in the range, is shown in the range, but remember it's not included. You guys did, and I'm, I'm talking to the three of you because you're sitting here, I should be looking everywhere. But uh, when you guys took your quiz and you did the domains and the ranges, the domains should have all been negative to positive infinity because they were easy, okay? When you did 1.2, okay? Now I'm talking about the ones that I had to hand grade, not the EDIA app that you did yesterday. So domain and range, on 1.2 should have been, domain should have been negative positive infinity, all of them, because there were no holes, no gaps, no craziness, okay? Your ranges were the ones that would change. Linear is always negative to positive infinity, domain and range, unless there's holes, okay? So if it looks normal, negative to positive infinity. When you get an exponential or a quadratic or an absolute value, it depends on if it's got a maximum or a minimum. With absolute value and quadratic, they're exactly the same. If it's a maximum point, that's gonna be your highest number. So it would be negative infinity to whatever your maximum is. That maximum has to have a bracket because it's an actual point on the graph, okay? So watch your brackets versus parentheses. Absolute value and quadratic are the same. If it's a minimum, that number, I think we had a minimum on one of them as negative four, you guys, or positive four. I don't remember which one it was, but you guys got the number but you didn't put the bracket. 
So you're doing the numbers correctly. You're doing that part great. Just remember absolute value and quadratic, use that bracket to include the number because it's actually there. When you get to exponential, you need to find that horizontal asymptote. That will be your minimum, but it is not included. So that's a parenthesis, okay? So that's the only thing that you guys are messing up on domain and range. And again, most of it is just parenthesis versus bracket. So if you got it wrong, you guys wanna go back and fix it. You can fix it. I don't care. I told you, you got multiple attempts. So little things like that are what will get you counted off on your test. You can fix it on your quiz. And then when you get to your test, you should know it and not have to worry about going back to fix it. Okay, so watch those brackets versus parentheses. All right, so our exponential, again, has a power of X. You can see that this one has an X minus three plus one. You guys were not pulling out the vertex well with this one either. It is the exact same. Whatever's with X, we're gonna change. So this vertex point is three, and then we keep the last number one. If there's not a number there, we put zero. What translation does this tell me? Which way did it go? If it's a positive three on the x-axis. Positive three, right? Uh -huh. And then what does the one tell you? Up one. Guys, think about this. If you can't like mentally see it in your head, which is perfectly fine, Think about how you would graph this. How do we graph this? We start at zero, zero. We all, we've been doing this since we've graphed point. How do I graph three, one? I go to the right three and I go up one. It's the exact translation. Where are we going from zero, zero? So if we go back to this one, where did we go from zero, zero? We went over four, we didn't go up any. So we went to the right four, up none. How about this one? How did we start it? We went up one. How does this change it? Because it writes it like this. This is the worst one. This is the worst one. But then these are super easy. Okay. We're going to translate it. We're going to do negative J of X, which means throw a negative on the front. So it's going to turn into negative two X minus three plus one. The negative is on the front. So that means we changed Y. So it's going to reflect X and I'm going to show you that on Desmos instead of graphing it by hand. Okay, so change Y reflect X. Your first graph was two to the, you got to put this in parentheses, X minus three and then plus one. When we do Y, if you guys want to do that full parenthesis every time, just in case, so you don't feel like you're screwing it up, do that. It's fine. You can go up here too and copy and paste it. You don't have to type it like 40 times. And then you can see that it reflected over that X axis. It just flipped over. Okay. I don't need you to graph the reflections. I need you to know them. So on your test, all you're going to do is get an equation. Sorry, I keep forgetting to flip back and forth. Get an equation like this or like this, and you're going to say, I'm going to say, what was the translation? So you're going to have to go through and tell me the translation. Okay, that's it. You don't have to graph it. Are there functions that you'll have to graph on your test? Yes, there are. Okay, yes, there will be functions. Yes, you will have to do it by hand. You cannot do it on the calculator. If you do it on the calculator and send me a screenshot, I'm going to count it wrong. Got it? After this unit, we don't have to worry about that. All right. So then down here, it's trying to get you to understand domain and range with some crazy functions and what happens when we translate that domain and range. I will show you the graphing way and then I will show you my, what I call the cheater method, okay? If you can pick up the cheater method, you're fine. If you need to graph it, that's fine too. All right, so I'm gonna label all of these points real fast. So this first one is negative five, negative three. The next one is negative two, zero. I would suggest that you label them two. This one is zero, negative two. Two, negative four. And three, negative three. Okay. So after seeing your domain and ranges yesterday and the day before, I wanna make sure that you understand this again, okay? So I'm gonna use different colors for a minute. 
and we're going to talk about domain. Remember, domain is left to right. So this graph starts here, stops here. There's no crazy holes or anything between. So it's just going to be one little set. We're going to look at our X's. That's all we look at, our X's. And tell me how this graph stretches. It stretches from left to right, where to where? Negative five to three, correct? Is everybody okay with that? They are included, they're not holes. So I need to make sure that I use brackets. We're gonna do the same thing for the Y. It's how low Dylan, we start at 8.40. Please be on time. How low to how high? Our lowest point is here. Our highest point is up here. And this time we're looking at the Y coordinates, the Y coordinates. We go lowest to highest. There are no holes, there are no gaps, nothing crazy in this. So it's gonna look just like the domain, just different numbers. Our lowest number is negative four. Our highest number is zero. If you have to highlight on your graph, highlight on your graph. It's all good, okay? All right, so look at this very first one. We're gonna take this function. This is our so-called parent function. This is the one we're gonna manipulate. And it tells us to do this to it. it tells us to do this. You don't have to change the function. You don't have to rewrite the function. You just got to tell me what it does. What does it do? So if it's a negative three with your X, you're going to pull it out and make it a positive three. This is not your vertex point at this point. Just be patient, okay? Then you're going to keep your Y. What is this telling us we're doing to this function? How are we moving it? What does the three mean? To the right three. And what does the positive four mean? I'm gonna graph them for you. If we were doing this in class on a sheet of paper, I would not make you graph it, okay? I mean, you guys are doing it. What I'm talking about is in your homework, you used to look just like this, but I would not make you graph it by hand, okay? Only if you needed it. So we're gonna take these numbers and we're gonna move them right three and up four. So I'm gonna take this point and I'm gonna go right three and up four, and I get the coordinate negative two, one. And I'm gonna plot it. I'm gonna take negative two, zero, and I'm gonna move it right three and up four, and I get one, four. And there was a straight line between those. So I'm just taking this whole entire function and moving it right three and up four. I'm gonna take this zero, negative two, and I'm going to move it right three and up four. And it was a little swoop in there, not a big deal. I'm going to take that bottom two, negative four. So two, negative four, and I'm going to move right three and up four. And then I'm going to take that three, negative three, and move right three and up four. It wants you to tell me your new domain and range. Your new domain and range. So let's look at our domain. What are your X values from least to greatest? Negative two to six. And we're gonna use brackets because there are no holes. It's included. That's all you do. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to do it without graphing in just a second. We're gonna do our Y's. Here's the lowest, here's the highest. What's the lowest number it touches on the Y axis? Zero, and the highest it touches is four. And we're gonna bracket it because there's no holes in craziness. That's it. All right, so now here's what I want you to see. And I'm gonna, I hope this doesn't bother you, but I'm going to use this graph paper. I don't need the graph, but I need the paper part. 
So we had a domain to begin with. This was our parent domain of negative five, three. Negative five, three. We said we moved it right three. That's a positive. I'm gonna put it right underneath there. And up four is a positive. Okay. Did I give the right numbers? Did I graph something wrong? Something's not right. One, two, three, one, two, two, one. Hold on, I screwed something up. Ignore this for a minute. I screwed something. I didn't screw it up. Something's not right with what I'm teaching. Just go to the next one. I'll show you how to do it. And I'll, I'll do this one. Go to the bottom. So we do add and subtract. Oh, I know what I did. I know what I did. I'm a dummy. It's me. This is all X values. So only your X should go with it. Does that make sense? Okay, so my X was three. If I add this, I get negative two and six should be in brackets. That's what I got from my domain. My parent range was negative four, zero, and we moved it up four. Remember, range is y value, so we only use the y for that. We get zero and four, and that's our range from right here, okay? I'll do that again on the next one. Sorry that I confused you. Again, every time I have to start and stop, I lose my train of thought about what I'm supposed to do, so I apologize that I'm doing that. Today has been really scattered, and I apologize, all right? So this one, what does this one tell us to do? If we add two to X, we're actually doing a minus two, and then we have a minus one on the end. What does that one tell us to do? Left two, down one. You'll have to do that on your test, okay? Left two and down one. So I'm gonna show you again real fast. Our original domain was negative five, three. These are X's. I'm only gonna use my X value, left two. Got it? Only use your X value. What is negative five minus two? Negative seven. Three minus two is? This should be your new domain, okay? I'll show you on the graph. We're gonna take negative five, negative three, this very first one, and we're gonna move it left two and down one, left two and down one, and we're gonna get negative seven, negative four. Negative seven, negative four. The next point is gonna be at negative four, one. The next point is gonna be at negative two, negative three. The next point is gonna be at zero, negative five. And then your last point is gonna be at one, negative four. If we look at our domain, it stretches from negative seven to one. So do you have to graph it? No, you don't have to graph it, okay? Look at your range, your original range was negative four, zero. These are Y values. So we took our Y and we did down one, which gives us negative five, negative one. If you look at your graph, the lowest we went is negative five. The highest we went was negative one. Again, just make sure it's lowest to highest. So those are your translations. Two more questions and we'll be done, okay? We're going to do a reflect X and a reflect Y. I need you to tell me which one it is. This very first one. 
we are changing what? What does f of x represent? We're changing y, so that means we do what? Reflect x. Okay, so I want to show you these points so you can do it without having to work on it. <clears throat> if we reflect x and we take our original, this, my blue is going to be my original. Do not graph the blue one I want to show you, okay? Negative 5, negative 3. This is your original one. If we reflect x, this is our x-axis. It's 3 below. We're going to go 3 above. Okay. The next coordinate was negative 2, 0. Since it's on the x-axis, it stays there. You can't reflect it over it because it's on it. You have 0, negative 2 as your original one. It's 2 below the x-axis, so I'm going to go 2 above the x-axis. We have 2, negative 4. It's 4 below, so I'm going to go 4 above on the same line. And then we have 3, negative 3, which will go 3 above on that one. So here's your original. It did a straight line, it did a swoop, and then it kind of did a V. This one is going to look the same way but it's going to be upside down, okay? And then I want you to tell me how it changed domain versus range from the regular, okay? So here's our domain. What's our domain? It didn't change, did it? Because what did we say we changed? Sorry, class of three. We changed Y, right? So X should not change. So when we changed Y, what happened? We're looking at the black graph. The lowest is zero. The highest is positive four. The lowest is zero. The highest is positive four. How did that change from this negative four zero. Mm -hmm. The four became positive and what happened to the coordinates? They switched and changed. So you flip and change, okay? You guys did this in math two with coordinates. You don't remember it, I'm sure, but you did do it in math two with coordinates, okay? So flip and change. All right, look at the next one. What are we doing on this one? We're changing which variable? which is actually a reflect of y. So on our domain, we're gonna be changing x. So what should our range be? If we're only changing x, what should our range be? Negative four to zero, it should be the same. Okay, so I'm gonna graph it so you can see it. I'm gonna do the original in blue. We have negative five, negative three, ne oh, negative two, zero, zero, negative two, here, here, here's your original. So to reflect y, we're going to start with this first point. It is 5 from the y-axis, so I'm going to go 5 the other way from the y-axis. Negative 2 is 2 from the y-axis, so we're going to go 2 from the y-axis on the other side. This one is on the y-axis, so it does not change. This one is 2 from it, so we're going to go 2, and this one is 3 from it. So this was a straight line, this was that swoop, and this was that V-shape. So we're looking at the black graph, the black graph. Your domain of the black graph, oops, sorry, is what? How did we go? Negative three to positive five. What did we do? Look at your old one. We flipped and changed the sign. So if it's a reflect X or a change Y, so change Y, we change the range. Flip and change. Don't do anything to the domain. If it's a change X, we change our domain. And if you guys look, your range is still 
from negative four to zero. So all we're looking at is how you manipulate domain and range. You will not have to do anything like this on your test. You will have to identify domain and range. So you won't have to make the reflection and then domain and range. You'll just have to do straight domain and range. Okay, does that make sense? So this is not technically on your test. Just the domain and range part is, okay? All right. Tomorrow, you need to make sure that you have highlighters. Do not go anywhere, Zoomers. Do not go anywhere. Oh, Skyly, what part did you, I don't know what part you wanted. Did you get it? Okay, perfect. All right. So I'm going to take this off. Do not go anywhere. I want to look at your one, two quiz. This looks different than yours because I have more stuff in my modules than you do. And I'm going to talk to you about some things that I saw so that we, we are all on the same page. Okay. So we did good with this one. We knew that it was quadratic. How do we know that it's quadratic? One more time. Uh-huh, the X is squared, so the square. Your vertex point, you guys did well with this. The only thing that I saw is some of you weren't changing the X value. So your vertex should be a positive two, four. Okay, so those are the things that I saw on that question. If I go to the next one. Let me get this out of my way for a minute. All right, so we look at the domain on here, and this is x minus two squared plus four, x minus two squared plus four, x minus two squared plus four. And we look at this graph, you guys know y'all can move that everywhere. It has a minimum at four, so the lowest that it goes, domain is negative to positive. I told you they were all negative to positive. The range on this one, the lowest is four, so that's bracket four, and then it goes all the way to infinity, comma, infinity. I didn't care if you write infinity. I didn't care if you did the double zeros. I didn't care if you did the symbol. I knew what you were talking about. So all of that is fine. I didn't take off any credit for anything like that, spelling, and that's not how I am. What I took off credit on this for is whether you had the parentheses or the bracket, okay? So if you did not have the bracket, you did miss that question, and that might have been the only thing that you missed on it, all right? So make sure that you get that. Uh, that was number four. The range was number four. All domains were negative to positive. This one, some of you were putting that it was linear. You guys see those absolute value bars? You know it's absolute value. And I did give you all four choices up there as to what you could choose from. So you knew that one of them could have been absolute value. Your vertex point, remember to change the X, keep the Y. So the vertex point would have been positive three, negative two. Got it? All right. Same thing for this one, domain is negative to positive. This one, because it moved down two, it was at the at negative two, is everybody good with that? So the lowest it went was negative two included, so bracket negative two, and then went up to infinity. Okay, so bracket negative two up to infinity. Most of you that got it like somewhat right only missed the bracket, okay? Some of you are putting just one number, you know that's not right. We haven't done no domain and range yet with one number except for the one on the quiz that I'll show you in just a minute as well. So there's your domain and range on that. Da -da 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 -da. Question eight, same thing. Question nine. So this one, because X is in your exponent is exponential. I didn't have any problems with that one. Everybody was fine. Same thing, your vertex coordinate is going to be change X, keep the last number, or keep Y. So negative one, negative three should have been your vertex. Negative one, negative three. Okay. When you go to your domain and range, two X plus one minus three, two, two X plus one. Why am I not typing? Hold on x plus one minus three. All right, so when we look at this, I don't like, I don't like that they go by two, so I like to zoom in a little bit so you can go by ones. Everybody see that? So 
some of you, when you're graphing on your very first quiz, you were looking at Desmos and you were graphing it weird because you were looking at Desmos. Okay, watch what your scale is on your graph. So this one never touches what? We got it one more time. It goes through zero. Negative three. It never touches negative three. If you're doing it on your calculator, you guys can see that a little bit better. Like I said, you can switch between the two and that's perfectly fine. I don't care. But when you get to your... Give me just a second. I got to switch screens. And I don't have it open anymore. There you go. When you go to your calculator table, you'll see like it does right here. It'll go to that negative three and just get stuck there. So that tells you that that's your asymptote. Okay, that's your horizontal asymptote. So the range for this would have been the lowest it goes is negative three, but it's not included, so we use a parenthesis. So right now, exponentials, normal graphs, exponentials are the only ones that don't have included values, okay, on normal regular graphs. And that's going to be whatever that horizontal asymptote is, okay. When we go back, I don't know where I'm at. There we go. And we go to question 13. This one is linear. Again, we won't see any more linear that are in vertex form. I know that sounds crazy. Linear do not have a vertex, just like absolute value, not absolute value, but uh, exponential don't have vertex, but you use it as your translation. Okay, so when you look at this on your test, just use it as your translation. So your vertex point would have been positive two, positive three. And then this one is negative to positive infinity for both. Okay, so that's that quiz. I want to look at one more on the first one. And you guys can go back and fix these. Nobody said you couldn't. It's going to take me 20 years to grade them, but I don't mind because I want you to have a good grade. So if you're not happy with your first grade, now you should know what's going on. That's not what I wanted. One. Why is it doing that? Give it two seconds. Sorry, y'all. Internet is slow today. There it goes. All right, now. Let's look at one of the ones that you guys missed on this. You should know that this is, this is on your test, okay? What type of graph from here? I think it was one of the last ones. This one, yep. Okay, so the domain for this graph is just what is your what is your x values in the function? The only x that this touches is what? Negative four. That's it. Is it included or excluded? So some of you just gave me d equals negative four, which is great that you recognize that it's only negative four. So I was I was super happy about that. But remember what we said that when we like take our little sticky note or whatever and slide it over. I see the open point, but would there be solid points touching that sticky note when I slid it over from the left? Yes, so that closes it up. So that hole doesn't really exist on the domain. So it should be brackets. So for this one, what you would have typed in is your bracket. No, I can't type it. Bracket negative four. And if you guys use the little curly brackets, I gave you that too. Don't stress out about that, about how you type it, okay? Now, if you gave me parentheses, I said no. Got it? Everybody good? So that's, that's the domain on that. That's as good as it gets on that one. So then if we do the next question, which will be the range, most of you did very well on this question. The lowest it goes is negative four. It is solid, so that's included. So uh, bracket negative four. And then it went up to six, but six is an open circle, so it should have been a parenthesis. Okay, so watch your brackets versus parentheses. Any of you that want to go back through and do those, you absolutely can. Okay, it's open multiple times, so make sure that you go back and do that if you want to. So some of you might have got like a 30 something on it. You should know how to do it now after listening to this. Okay, so make sure that you go back and fix that. 
It might take me a few few days to grade it because I got new stuff to grade, but I will get back to it, okay? All right, I am going to stop sharing and stop recording.